All right, I'm going to be uh, going through a, a resource estimation from end to end uh, using Genesis software, which is produced by SGS Geostat. This is software that we've been uh, using for the past uh, more than 15 years, and uh, we've had a major update with lots of features, and we'd like to show off some of the things it can do. Um, basically, you can, uh, you can download the uh, trial version uh, online at this website. And uh, if you want to buy it, the purchase price is really quite competitive compared to what's available on the market. So the file type uh, that it produces is a GNFT. It's basically based on C uh, SQLite, which is a database uh, type of system. So you don't have any uh, text files or anything, uh, lots of different file types sitting around. It's very simple. The workflow is uh, very streamlined. So we're going to start right from the beginning. We're going to import the data. So we have the caller file, deviation, and assay. We're going to overwrite what we have already. So let's just check that we have all of the different. Yes, everything is going in the right place. Uh, same thing here for the deviations. And for the assays. It's a very simple project. We just have copper, so that goes in. So we have our 92 holes uh, loaded in the assays. We get an import log. Nothing surprising there. All right, so let's see what we have. So we have uh, drill hole traces with the assays showing. Uh, I've made a color legend here, basically uh, the hotter colors uh, gets to uh, higher grades of copper. And uh, so let's start doing some modeling right away. It's hard to see actually right now what's going on. We can take the traces out and get a better idea what was sampled, but we can't see the grades very well. So the first step, this is a little bit different than the other software, is what we create um, what are called mineralized intervals. So we'll call this SGS. And we're going to create these by using a cutoff. Uh, so basically, here we have um, the different parameters used to establish the mineralized intervals. Uh, a lot of the titles are, are have information. So if you don't know what uh, a certain parameter is, you can click on it and get the information. In this case, let's change this to 4. We're going to permit a little bit more waste within our mineralized intervals. Press OK. We're going to add those. And so we've created 126 mineralized intervals. Let's see what we have here. So let's turn off the assays. And now what we have is basically it's picked out the, the best portions of, of the mineralization that's there. You can quickly see maybe we have one structure here. And if we turn it this way, maybe we have another one there. We can also m visualize the uh, mineralized intervals as spheres. So these are colored again by the same legend we had before for the assays. But the diameter is, is basically the uh, drill hole intersection. So we see one structure here and maybe another one that's a little bit more vertical there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to model these. So let's clean up a little bit what we have here. Let's go back to the bars. And I'll show you something called fast mode. So this is fast mode is currently on. We can. Uh, make sure that we're selecting the mineralized intervals and you can see here by right clicking I have uh, some menus it's very intuitive I can go to uh, click on mineralized intervals or I can have a shortcut I type in 30 and the mineralized intervals become selectable I, now if I double click on a, a mineralized intervals and I get the commands that are related to that uh, item so in this case I want to delete I'm in fast mode so I just keep my mouse button press my right button and I go over the mineralized intervals you can see they turn yellow once they're selected and uh, I'm going to press enter and they disappear let's clean up a little bit more over here and let's get rid of these guys it's basically like coloring and there we go we'll get rid of those all right, so now we have a little bit of a cleaner model. And now we're going to go to the section. So the sections are displayed on the side. And now we see, you know, normally this would take a lot uh, more time. We could go, I've just lit up the assays. 
the geologist or the engineer would like to go through and make sure that, for example, this waste gap uh, makes sense to leave it behind and have two separate mineralized intervals. But I'm doing this the quick way, and uh, we're just going to drive through here very quickly. So now I'm going to create a prism, which is basically like a 3D ring or a closed polyline, uh, which is going to help us to find the volume. So now we're going to make sure we're, s we're cr creating a prism and we're in fast mode. That's great. We get into 2D, press the green button, and then I just, again, I just drag the, the cursor over top of the the mineralized intervals that I want, and they, they become selected, and I've created my first prism. So let's see. We see in 3D, we see that this actually mineralized interval is snapped. We can change the display to show it that way. So we see it's actually snapped on the mineralized intervals. Let's go to the next section. We'll make a few more. There we go. We're going to leave this one behind because I'm pretty sure it belongs to the second structure. We'll go to the next section. Now we're on the, we just have the single intersection here, so we're going to get off of fast mode and we're going to draw a prism the old fashioned way. You can see it snapped on the mineralized intervals there. And we'll grab that. Close it off. So let's see what we have now. So we have four of the, uh, of the prisms created. We have a few more sections to do. So let's, oops, we gotta go into fast mode on. So now it's created something a little bit wonky there. We're gonna go fix that. So we can make sure we're select prism, we double click on there, modify limits, just delete those nodes. And obviously, you would want to uh, go back and add more nodes to make it make a smoother shape if you would like to. But for the purpose of uh, getting this done quickly, we're just going to cruise through here. And we'll just add one more here. We're in fast mode. And do we want that one? Yeah, let's go grab that. So we'll go through this one like that. We'll do a little pant leg there. Actually, let's get rid of that because that's going to give us some headaches later on. All right, just leave it like that. Make this a little bit more All right, let's see what we have now. So let's just stop here. Let's we have we could go a little bit a little bit more towards here, but I'm just going to oh, we're going to have an issue here. So let's go right now and delete these because we have another prism that's going through there. So let's uh, go back in fast mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all of these prisms know that they're together. I select them in fast mode and I'll change the tag so we have all the same tag. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link all tag STS. And you see the colors change from black. And I have a blue at first, green prisms in the center, and then a red prism at the end. So now each of these prisms realizes where it is in, 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 in order. Uh, what I would like to do is sort of extend these in both directions. I can double click and do add caps. So it's you can change the parameters here and you basically add prisms on either end. So I've added these little prisms. They've shrunk a little bit and they're outbound a little bit. So now we're sort of have an extrapolation distance that's coherent in all directions. All right, so let's uh, make our mesh. So we'll say mesh current link. All right. Created a new envelope here. We'll call it SGS. And let's take a look at it. All right. If we want, we can uh, press E actually, which brings up the envelope list. And if you have many envelopes, you can actually sort them by by the color, by display, or any number of, of things. So let's change the color just to make it more visual. And right away, look at that. We didn't have to add any tie lines or anything. Uh, the tie lines were added by the program itself. So that worked out great. All right. So now we have mineralized intervals. Uh, let's turn that off. But we don't have composites yet. We have assays, but we haven't split those assays up into uh, the component parts. So let's make the composites. So um, we'll go here, we'll add a set. We'll call it SGS. OK. And we'll create. We want regular intervals. That's fine. We have different options here for compositing. The length of the interval is 2 meters. That's good. And we can do we can apply capping at this point, but we're just gonna go straight for that. So we've created 585 composites, and they're basically they're created anywhere where the mineralized intervals are created. Let's light them up. So anywhere we see, where we see mineralized intervals, the composites were created. Now here we have a little bit of a problem. We would have to go back and make sure the composites are created in the areas where where we have uh, zero values, or uh, alter these mineralized intervals. Actually, we can do that right now. Uh, we'll delete this one. Actually, we'll delete this one. Delete. OK. And we'll extend this one. Modify limits. So now that mineralized interval is respecting the limits of the solid, we can do that here as well. Delete, delete. And you see the, the, the color of the mineralized interval is changing? Well, it's because the grade of the entire uh, mineralized interval is changing as you're as you're changing its dimensions. All right, so let's remake those composites. And replace what we had. Continue, and we have a slightly different number. There we go. But now we've created composites everywhere. So we want to make sure that the when we do the interpolation, we don't spread all these composites, and we can do that during the estimation settings. So now we have composites. We don't have blocks. We do have an envelope. So let's go make our block model. I press B, which brings up the block model list. And I create new. It asks me, do you want to use an existing block model? Yes. So let's use that one as a template. You can change uh, the dimensions and everything here. But let's limit the block model to the envelope we just created. Press OK. Uh, let's go see what we have. So uh, light up the block model. Oh, let's go back and turn off the template, make that invisible. There we go. So let's turn off the prisms and the envelope. So that's our block model. So we can double click on the block 
on any block and it gives us information. Uh, the copper grade is at minus one because it has not been interpolated. And uh, we can actually visualize uh, our, uh, our ellipsoids that we were going to use for the interpolation. So these are two that were previously created. Uh, this is the menu for the ellipsoids, so we can create new ones and have uh, flattened and uh, oriented uh, ellipsoids. So for now, we're just going to use those spheres that are there. Let's go back to the block model. We'll rename this SGS. Estimation settings. So we want to use, let's say for today, we're just going to use inverse distance squared. We're going to use a single pass with the smaller ellipsoid. We're going to take a minimum of four composites, a maximum of 15. And then we're going to limit to three, so it has to, it's forced to go to two drill holes. OK. So that was the estimation settings. And then we tell it to estimate. And that's done. And we see what we have here. So what we see actually is that with a single pass we weren't able to to assign a grade to these blocks over here so we can quickly go back and say well let's do a second pass let's go back to the settings and let's add a second pass so we want to use the larger ellipsoid the sphere with the same parameters and we should be able to get those blocks interpolated with grade and there we go. So now all the blocks that have been interpolated with grade. If we want to do the uh, validation quickly, we can uh, go through uh, layer by layer. There we go. There's our, our block model here. We can compare the composite grade uh, here with the blocks surrounding it. We can light up the, uh, the mineralized intervals as well. So that looks good. Take a closer look in here. Oh, we do have a few blocks that were not interpolated. Oh no, they're there. It's just the grade is uh, is gray. All right. So now we have a, a block model that's been interpolated, and if we want to quickly see what what we have, Uh, there we go. And there's our resources, tonnage, volume, uh, interpolated grade, and the density. If we had done a classification, then we would get that. So that's the quick and simple uh, workflow in Genesis. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.